<laughs> Time for Here's the Deal. And joining us tonight, Chris Thompson, Aaron Ireland, and Aaron MacArthur. Thanks for being here, everybody. Yeah. We're going to start off with the Ramada Temporary Housing. So this was actually it was kind of a rundown, humming building at the bottom of Hastings, right near the highway. And the city bought it, and they're turning it into transitional housing. So, and only until next year, the fall of next year. Would that upset you if that was in your neighborhood, Erin? Uh, well, you know what, it was at one point. I was living at Maine and Pryor for about four months and my mom was quite nervous about the situation. Um, it was about five years ago. There were definitely drug addicts and homeless people in the neighborhood, but in the four months that I, that I lived there, um, I was never threatened, my car was never broken into, I did not see a syringe on the ground. Um, so I, I think homelessness is such a big problem in our city and we have to try to solve it one way or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. A lot of people have been complaining that it's NIMBYism. And if you look at it from the point of view of the city, well, what are they supposed to do? They've got this great hotel that's ideally suited. Do they want, like, to pick the hotel up and move it? <laughs> like, if it makes financial sense and it's in the right area and it's a good thing, and it's go by for the it. elementary school. Um, and I, I just, I don't think that it would left necessarily be a problem. I would love to see other instances where there are homeless shelters near elementary schools. Have there been problems? It's not on the downtown east side and for the last decade we've been talking quite clearly about trying to get the core of the problem moved elsewhere mm -hmm. to try to get some people who don't need to be in that part of town in other parts of town and here's a, a perfect example of the city trying to do that and neighbors are throwing up their arms mm -hmm. which I seems to see. oh, oh, go, go no no I was gonna say that seems to be a bigger problem to me anytime anyone tries to do anything in the city of Vancouver people just put their hands up and no, melt no, down no don't want it don't want it bike you lanes haven't homeless consult, anything you haven't consulted us enough and I get that you're taxpayers and you're paying for these things but do we have to consult you isn't that why we elect politicians is to do the business but on the on the side of the people who are complaining I mean mm. that's as as a city, you want to figure out, okay, well, how many people are complaining? Do they have a legitimate complaint? If yes, is it outweighed by the benefits to everyone else in mm -hmm. the city? And maybe even to them. And I think the city made a pretty clear decision that the answer is yes. Yeah. And you know what? If you'd had a halfway house for pedophiles, yeah, exactly. I've, got a, I, I I've think got a problem. There are bigger chances of a pedophile targeting the school than a major incident happening with mm -hmm. one of the homeless people. Yeah. So, okay. We all agree. Sounds like, though I was actually a little surprised, there's Larry Davies telling me it's not actually going to be men uh, who are in recovery and thinks uh, they've changed the tune and, and sounds like there was some misinformation. It could be uh, women and Aboriginal women and who, ne who need a home. So we'll see how that plays out. All right, uh, what are you doing for New Year's Eve? Don't know yet. <laughs> Don't know yet. Going to Bowen Island, renting a cabin. Wow, that sounds quiet. <laughs> what part of New Year's Eve? Because I'll be asleep at midnight. Yes. But up until about 9 o'clock, I'll be having a great time. Oh, okay. So, you know, people kind of know what they're doing for this New Year's Eve. So why is the city of Vancouver planning for next year? Well, I think it takes more than... 19 days to plan a New Year's party yeah, on a city-wide scale. Yeah, but they could have scale. started a little while ago. Well, I'd really like to know what the entertainment is. I mean, <laughs> there are fireworks and there are food trucks, but really, what's the draw? I mean, it's cold. The celebration of light is always successful, and people come out for that, but um, I can't say that I would want to go. No, it's going to be at Jack Pool Plaza. Right. That's where they'd like to host this, right down sort of between um, the new convention center. Uh, the Pan Pacific, the old convention center, that area there. It's just bizarre. Is it? It's bizarre. Let's have a New Year's party next year. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We'll save the date. It's, it's just, I think it's that's a good odd, idea. In, in, in odd. I think we're a world class city. I think we need a public New oh, Year's sure. celebration like this. And I think it's a great opportunity for us to prove that we are not, you know, <laughs> what happened during the. Can well, we, we haven't that? had. I mean. Well, if you look at New York, look, I don't know how long it takes them to plan the Times Square stuff. <laughs> yeah. But if it takes you more than a year to plan a party, it takes you more than a year to plan a party. But you need, do you need to have a press conference announcing that it takes us more than a year to plan the party? Just get on with it and These announce it when questions. it's time to go. <laughs> you know what I think, though? They want corporate sponsorship. Yeah. So you have to start. And I would imagine, I don't go looking for corporate sponsorship these days, but it's tough. Is it pretty tough? Money pretty <laughs> tight. I don't know. Do you guys I don't know? either. No. I, I think it's tight. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't really know that, so. No, I think it's hard to get money. I mean, it's been hard to get money for the fireworks in the summer, and by all accounts, that's a, you know, a raging success. Mm -hmm. um, so I can imagine that it's tough to find people who are going to hand over, you know. Get it sponsored 20, by a champagne company. <laughs> Donation in kind. Yeah. There well, isn't there an early countdown? <laughs> there are fireworks oh, yeah, that's at midnight, right, yeah. but it's actually an early countdown. Yeah, for the parents who have kids that want to get to bed or something. It's very family Well, it's heads. almost yeah. like we've gone overboard now. We were no fun Coover, <laughs> yeah. and now we're like, hey, look, we've got everything. You know, we've got the Christmas market and, and uh, Christmas yeah. at Flyover Canada, and, uh, you know, next year. All right, well, set the date aside, because there'll be a, <laughs> uh, a New Year's Eve party. Giselle Bunchen, 
one of the luckiest women on the planet. <laughs> Seriously. Why is, Why is that? Born supermodel hot, <laughs> speaks, I don't know, five languages, marries hot American quarterback, has two adorable babies, sends out a picture on Instagram of herself breastfeeding her daughter, who's just about a year old, 12 months old. That's her second baby there. So she tweeted, Instagrammed this out and said, hey, thank goodness I have this team making me beautiful after 15 hours of flying. I was looking at the background. I'm trying to figure out, is she in Brazil there? Like, did she fly to her home country or was she, I don't know where that is, um, caused an uproar. Why do you think that is, Erin? Uh, I think it's ridiculous. I think there are way more women out there who are wearing inappropriately low-cut shirts and showing way more cleavage than she was. You you could barely see her breast. You could just see the baby. I think it's a beautiful image. She's feeding her baby with her own breast milk. I, I really cannot grasp what, what the controversy is. The uproar is about the breastfeeding, not about the team of eight making her up. Right. I just think there was overall uproar because we love to hate people who live a good <laughs> life. I well, just see, that's, it, uh, that's, more, that's more my point. I'm, yeah. I'm more jealous of the fact that she has a team. I mean, <laughs> yeah. this, this is hard to do. <laughs> I got one person. <laughs> you started December not 12th of the last year. Yeah. You had to look back I did on a press TV. conference yeah. announcing yeah. it. Yeah. I, I just think it's really narcissistic. It's like, that hey, look, is. there's all these people you know, mm. doting over me, and I got one guy doing my hair and someone else doing my nails, and oh, look what I can do all at the same time. Woe is my life. I agree, but the topic of breastfeeding, I think it's completely closed-minded and old-school to even, you know, harp on her on that topic, you know, just yeah, breastfeeding no, in public. I think that, well, you know, But she wasn't mother, in public. I mean, that was the funny thing right, to me. She's not... But but people were complaining about public, that. Yeah, I mean, she right. wasn't in public. She was clearly in a very posh apartment somewhere uh, with a team of stylists who were prepping her for a photo shoot. Or, I mean, really, it was a tough day at the office for poor G.C. <laughs> well, if, if, honestly, if, if the issue is about her breastfeeding in public, that, I mean, that's nonsense. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. Let's really, move on. Yeah, no, I think, you're, I think you're more bang on. We're just jealous. I try. <laughs> <laughs> I could not be. All right, I am excited about this uh, final little tidbit here. I want to play you a clip because we had Kirk Rockwell on our show last night. The bus driver, yeah, Free bus Santa. Um, <laughs> in his Santa suit, uh, and today he got some good news that he can actually wear his Santa suit behind the wheel of the bus. Have a listen to this. I, I, I am very, very lucky to have such great co-workers and union brothers and sisters. Uh, my union executive was behind me 110%. So I am very blessed. And more than anything, I'm really, really um, overwhelmed by the support from the public. I, I'm amazed at how fast this just went uh, viral, you know, all the media coverage and, that, and constantly people coming on. Today, my ridership was probably double what it normally is, and I know a lot of them were people that were, they wanted to see this bus, or they wanted to see if I'd be in my suit. Hello. This was the worst, best PR Coast Mountain Bus <laughs> Company ever had, hey? Are you surprised yeah. that it... He is so wonderful. I wish I'd been here last night to give him a hug. I think the more Santas, the better. I think all of all of the bus drivers who believe in celebrate Christmas should dress up in Santas. Let me just tell you, though, and I, I'm not sort of revealing secrets, but a bit of the backstory is Coast Mountain was, they put their foot down, and, and they were saying, absolutely not. We cannot have this happen. They had their spokesperson, Derek Zabel, saying that. They, they continue to say that. We asked for a comment yesterday, late afternoon, evening. They were, we are not allowing this to happen. It cannot happen. <laughs> they, were, they were wrong, and yes. they were proven wrong, and they backed down, so good for them. Well, and you know what? I just want people out there to know. It pays to complain mm -hmm. because this one case was um, the most attention they had from the public. This was the, the story they got the most calls from their ridership on about how dare you. So you can take on City Hall or Coast Mountain Bus Company in this case. I, th I think it's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's been doing it for 16 years. And, I mean, I really don't see the harm. I mean, I guess from Coast Mountain Bus Company's standpoint, they were worried about potential, you know, if there's an emergency, could you identify the bus driver? But the chances of that, of that happening are so slim. I mean, well, I, let's I just... asked him. I he's never had an accident as Santa in the as, bus. As, yeah. Well, <laughs> what, one day a year. <laughs> no, um, no, he, I think if, so he, he wears that from December, December 1st oh, to December 24th. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think if you look at it from Coast Mountain's point of view, what they're probably thinking is something along the lines of, if something goes wrong with his suit and it gets caught on something, it's into an accident or whatever, you're not allowed to actually wear the suit. You're supposed to be in uniform. Right. And I don't personally think there's anything wrong with a Santa suit, but then 
you the get... The WCP claim goes haywire. <laughs> yeah. Or all of a sudden you get Easter, someone dresses up like an Easter bunny, Halloween, someone does something <laughs> crazy and says, well, wait a minute, you let the Santa guy yeah. uh, mm. break the rules, and then next year someone's glued a taxidermied reindeer to the front of the bus. And then you're like, no, where <laughs> yeah. do you draw the line? They do have red Easter noses bunny? on the front of the bus, though. They do. That's they have antlers. They have, they have antlers noses. for the buses, and, too. And they were saying that yesterday. Hey, it's not that we don't like the holidays. We, we do get into the holiday spirit. I, I just, I loved, you know, uh, they're very generous. They help out with the big toy breakfast that happens at the Pan Pacific. Our global morning show was there, and they did a great job again this year. More money and more toys than ever before. Um, but the fellow who pulled up in the bus, the Coast Mountain bus for that, was dressed as an elf. <laughs> yeah, they no sent humbug. an elf there, and then they were saying, yeah, they, there's the picture. And then they were saying, yeah, sorry, buddy, you can't wear your Santa suit. Yeah, but you guys sent an elf down to the breakfast. You can't have it both ways. There yeah. certainly are limits to this, but, um, you know, a one-off that's been doing it for 16 years, I think it's fine. Yeah, well, it, that was the other hard thing was, how come it's been okay for 16 years? Weren't all those you things got, I don't know, it's, well, How long does it take uh, breaking a rule before you can start doing it all, for all time? Did mm -hmm. you hear about how other Santas were about to rent suits? <laughs> yeah, I heard <laughs> about that. That was good. In support of him. Well, Michael Eckford on CKNW two nights ago was saying, "Hey, if, I, if you're if you ride his bus, call me. I'll buy your Santa suit for you." <laughs> he wanted to fill the bus full of Santas. So. And, and he planned on uh, Mr. Rockwell planned on going through this. Keep, he was going to keep the suit, keep driving in the suit. He the was. union supported him, and yeah. I'm like, "Wow." I said that, to him that, last night, yeah. "So you're back in your uniform?" He goes, "Oh no, I'm wearing my Santa suit." So yeah, nice to see. You. I think you know what people are so tired of having to be political correct about Christmas that yes. this just pushed, pushed most of us over the edge. Yeah, similar kind of topic. Yeah. Happy yep. holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Next week I'll be here in a Santa suit. Will you? I look forward I to it. I don't have Me one. Me too. Right. Go, you can go shopping for them now. Chris Thompson, Aaron Ireland, and of course Aaron MacArthur. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thank you. Coming up next on Unfiltered, high praise for Gordon Campbell's green initiatives from the lone green MLA. What does Andrew Weaver think of Christy Clark's environmental record? 